a pediatrician, I get asked all the time by parents, does my child have asthma? And how do I know if my child is going to have asthma? So in this video, I'm going to cover some of the common risk factors that you should know about as a parent to know whether your child may develop asthma and some of the common, most common asthma triggers to help you navigate the challenge of parenthood. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Eileen. I'm a board certified pediatrician and on this channel, I go over some of the most commonly discussed topics in pediatrics so that you can walk away feeling more empowered as a parent. In this video, we're gonna talk about asthma. Now it's a big topic and there are several videos that I've made about asthma that might answer some of your other questions. In this video specifically though, we're gonna be talking about the common risk factors if your child is going to develop asthma and also the most common triggers for asthma to help you understand this condition a little bit better. So let's get started. So when it comes to asthma, it is a very common condition I see as a pediatrician, but not everyone is going to have asthma just because they have coughed or wheezed. So who can have asthma? What are some of the triggers or some of the common uh, causes and risk factors? The biggest risk factor for having asthma is simply actually in this case, family history. So if someone in the family, especially a direct relative, so let's say a parent or a sibling who has asthma, then there is a higher chance that your child may have asthma as well. Now I'm not really talking about like third degree or fourth degree grandparents or great cousins, but mainly just your one degree, first degree relatives. So your parents or if your siblings, if you got them, you may have a risk factor for developing asthma because it is inherited oftentimes genetically. The second risk factor for having asthma is in individuals who have atopic conditions. So atopic or the term atopy is what I use for patients who tend to have three things all together. So they may have allergic rhinitis, which is like allergies, they may have eczema, which could be blistering, dry, inflammatory skin, and they can also have asthma together. Now, these three conditions tend to go together, combining into the atopic condition, because they're often inherited together in the same part of the gene. gene. So we think that if you have the other two, which is allergies or eczema, then you're probably going to have or have a tendency to have asthmatic condition as well. So look out for that. Now, aside from that, that is aside from family history and having a topic condition such as allergy and eczema, you can also increase your risk of asthma if you are overweight. So it's very important to stay very active and not to stop doing activities when you have asthma to continue to have a healthy weight will help your body fight off asthma conditions and triggers. Number two is also trying to avoid cigarette smoking or having secondhand smoke around other kind of inhalants or irritants in the air, and also trying to avoid high pollution, high pollen counts, things that you know that are going to really inflame your respiratory system. So there you have it. These are generally the most common risk factors I see when patients have asthma. So the most important thing is consider your family history and consider some of the other comorbid conditions that some patients may have, which in this case, if allergies, eczema, then asthma might be somewhere in there. And by the way, if you found something helpful in this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel so that you guys can be notified for my new videos. Now, in this section, we're gonna go over some of the most common triggers for asthma. Most common trigger for asthma actually is an viral infection or what we call a common cold. Why is that? Well, most viral infections that causes common colds can really irritate the respiratory system. So when you get a cold, your lungs are getting infected by the virus and cause more inflammation. Your body is trying to build an immune response to, to fight it off. So all this increases the inflammatory changes in your lungs, which can increase your asthmatic symptoms. So having a common cold or just having a viral infection can definitely trigger your asthmatic symptoms. Now, indoor allergens. Now, this is a big one. So this includes pet dander. If you have cats and dogs that tend to shed, those are 
um, often a very common trigger for asthma if your child is allergic. Uh, if you have a lot of dust mites in the house, that's why it's really important to open the windows and freshen up the linens and kind of regularly clean. Also, if you have any cockroaches or mice, which I think is so common, especially if you live in a big city, that's something to consider. And also mold, mold that's in the house. Now this can happen in dry weathers, but more commonly in very humid um, weather and conditions. So if you have mold in the house, that can be a big trigger for asthma. Outdoor allergens do not count them out. So that is tree pollen, flower pollen, weed pollen. These are all common triggers for asthma, especially if your child is allergic to some of these allergens. Cold weather and temperature changes. Now, as a parent, if you have an asthmatic child, you may have already noticed this because your child may have more coughing or asthma symptoms in when the weather changes or during the seasonal changes or when the weather gets cold. We know that for a fact because the cold and the temperature changes can change some of the inflammatory responses in your lungs, in your airways, so it can be a trigger for asthma. Now, stress also is something that can worsen or trigger your asthma. I can't think of anything that stress doesn't contribute to, but definitely for asthma, it can cause your symptoms to worsen. So this comes in forms of emotional stress, physical stress, uh, mental stress. So really very important to look into what's going on if you're having just suddenly your asthma symptoms are acting up to really consider is there a new component of stress that's being added to your life and just address that it's so so important so emotional mental stress and physical stress can be a trigger now last but not least i saved this for last because this is probably one of the most important triggers for asthma and yay if you made it this far into the video now exercise is a trigger oftentimes for asthma. There is an entity of asthma that's called exercise-induced asthma. Is that different from kids who have asthma? Not really, but we do know that in children who have asthma, exercise can be a very common trigger. Now, this is so important. It doesn't mean that your child with asthma cannot do any exercise. It just means that if your child has asthma, you need to make sure that you have a rescue inhaler and that you have control medication in my other videos on asthma, which to be sure to refer to, that you may need to rely on those medications to be on a proper medical regimen to help prevent some of the asthma in these episodes from acting up. Now, most exercise-induced asthma can be prevented and can be treated. For patients who have exercise-induced asthma, I always recommend that before their sports activity or exercise, about 15 minutes to 20 minutes prior, definitely make sure to use your rescue inhaler, like a bronchodilator, one to two puffs, to help dilate the airways, and to help your body accommodate the exercise and exertion of the body. And also, if you're still coughing with activity, you can still use that inhaler, rescue inhaler, as needed uh, when you're having the symptoms of shortness of breath, chest tightness, coughing, and wheezing. Now, this does not mean that you don't need any control or medication. Some patients who have more symptoms of asthma, who has more coughs, might need a control medication. So, from on that note, it's very important to go in and see your pediatrician to have that in-depth discussion about when do the symptoms act up, are the medications working for you, and preventing those asthma attacks from happening. And there you have it, you guys the common risk factors for having asthma and the most common triggers for an asthma exacerbation. Asthma is such a big topic, so I didn't want to overwhelm you with everything. So be sure if you want us to learn more about this condition to check out the other videos on asthma in this channel. And I hope you guys feel more empowered with this information. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Remember this video is not meant to diagnose anything, but definitely to help you understand a little bit more about the conditions that we all have to deal with as parents. So take care, have a good one. See you guys back here next time.